In this video, I'm going to talk about the bench mount stand for the Creator Frame Fixture. What it is, what you might want to know if you're picking one of these things up, and then in the second half of the video, I'm going to talk about how I designed it and its engineering because I just think it's really cool. So this is the bench mount stand. When you buy the Creator Frame Fixture, it comes standard with this. We just finished this. I put a lot of design into it. And so we fabricate this in our shop. And this one here actually is not powder coated yet. They will be powder coated black. They will look nice and handsome. And actually in production, this back anodized aluminum cap will actually be our green color. I just couldn't get these first ones anodized green yet. Uh, basically, it has one axis of rotation. When you release this handle, it spins around. It spins around really smooth, and then when you tighten it, it locks up a little bit. And if you tighten it more, it locks up pretty nice. And so this is made to mount on like a standard bench. You know, I think uh, we have this mounted, I believe 34 inches above the ground. You have some latitude of adjustment. I'll make a chart to give you an idea how much clearance you really would want. But basically bench height is good enough. And pretty soon we're gonna offer this rolling lower stand that's roughly based on this design. Something that I didn't come up with, but Anvil Bike Works sold something like this for years and years. I'm gonna make something similar. It'll be powder coated, it'll bolt together. And then I also have in my web store, this laser cut plate is available. You can buy it right now. So if you know you want to fabricate your own lower stand of your own specification, or if you want a post that goes from this plate down to the floor, or if you want to bolt it or weld it to something else, it, it'll have the mating bolt pattern for either 3 8 or 10 millimeter fasteners so that you can just bolt it up and be done with it. Because the last thing you want is to buy the fixture and then immediately have some big fabrication job where you got to source all the materials and re-engineer it and all that crap. So uh, this thing is just made to, to spin smoothly and lock up and that's about it. We have a 12 millimeter adjustable handle. So, you know, like all the rest of them, when you pull it back, it swivels. This one is not a Kip brand made in Germany handle and uh, they will be when we start shipping them. Those are way superior handles in my opinion. That's what we use for everywhere else on the fixture. This works, but I just don't like the action of it and I don't like the feel of it. These ones are so much nicer. Uh, they cost a little bit more and they're totally worth it. So that, that's what this is gonna be as far as like the user experience is considered, uh, you know, for, for the end user, that's what you'd wanna know. But now, let me show you all about how I designed it, how it's engineered, some of the, the nifty features of it. So this is the assembly, sort of an exploded view of the bench mount stand. This is our weld mint. So this will be powder coated black with masking on the inside here and on the faces. And the rest of it is uh, just powder coated black to keep it from rusting. This goes against the frame fixture main extrusion. This slides inside of this tube. And then on the back we have the end caps, right? And so, uh, there's a lot of details in this. This here has 40 millimeter spacing for these bolts because uh, the extrusion that we're mounting to has T-slots that are 40 millimeters on center. And so you can pass M8 fasteners, eight millimeter fasteners through these holes and it'll bolt up to that T-slot extrusion. You could use this for a different style of uh, um, you know, frame fixture or your own extrusion, I suppose. Uh, but I engineered it for ours, of course. And coming out of this, we have a stainless steel laser cut plate. Uh, I call this the watch plate because it reminds me a little bit of a wrist watch. But it's a, it's a shape that keys into this piece of aluminum. And that becomes relevant because in assembly, I slide this sleeve bearing over and then it goes inside of this other tube, right? And that gets pressed in there. It's got a really nice fit. Uh, it fits really good in there actually. Even after welding, I made sure that it would fit nicely. And we have the steel face here of this tube bears directly against this stainless steel washer. So if this ever were to wear out somehow, you could replace it. I'm sure it won't wear out. You could also replace this for a different material, which I'm gonna play with, but I think this is probably what we're gonna stick with. And uh, it's just cool because aluminum is very manufacturable and handsome and the stainless steel has a good wear characteristic. And this is a really practical and economical way to put them together. So I, I thought that was cool. On um, this piece here, we have a laser cut plate. These were made just down the street from me. Uh, it was a really cool facility to tour. But uh, basically the outside dimension of this is four inches by four inches by quarter inch. The bolt pattern here is actually diagonal slots if you look closely. 
and that way you can accommodate uh, uh, two different bolt patterns. So if you're thinking in inches, you could just do three eighths of an inch fasteners at three inches on center, bolt spacing. And if you're thinking like metric fasteners, you could do 10 millimeter fasteners at uh, 75 millimeters on center. And both of those bolt patterns work just fine. And since I ship this product globally, I've done everything metric, but uh, you know, if it's easier for you to do it inches, they're nearly the same bolt pattern, so it just, it fits both of them. Isn't that cool? Uh, so that's that. And then, so on the top end here, we have the round tube, of course. I cut these to length on my automatic bandsaw, and then I turn them on my CNC lathe, and I bore them out, just like Paragon Machine Works makes your CNC machined 44 millimeter head tubes. And so I think there's actually some really cool details in here, and it's just fun. Uh, the, first of all, there's a larger diameter step right at the mouth, so when you're starting this bearing here, uh, if you're starting it by hand without a fancy press, uh, and we assemble these before we ship them, so you don't have to do this generally, but uh, still, I just think it's cool. It, it really makes it easier to start the bearing straight if there's a little bit of a step there that's a larger diameter. If you don't do that and it's tight before it even gets in, it's really hard to start it straight without like a press tool or some sort of square faces, you know, parallel face press. And uh, so anyway, whenever you're doing like a bearing bore, if you have the opportunity, it's really cool if you can do a small little step. And then in this case, you could just tap this in with a hammer gently. You're not gonna hurt anything. So that's, that's a really cool design consideration. And then further back in the bore, there's another step. And uh, that's actually serving a different purpose, which is that these bearings are an off the shelf component. You can buy these from McMaster Car. I think this one is $3 and I think this one is $4. They're 44 millimeters on the outside nominally and they're 40 millimeters on the inside. They're a food grade, acetyl delrin, plastic bearing. They'll last forever. But if you ever wanted to replace it or something, you could, it's just off the shelf component. And in order to make this off the shelf component work with my specification and my, my use case, we see that the weld here actually uh, is gonna distort the shape of the tube. And I didn't really need this to bear tightly against the bore through its whole depth. I really only need the first little bit of it. And so what I did is actually I relieved some material further back so that where that weld overlaps into the bearing zone, the press fit zone, it's, uh, it's relieved a little bit back there. So like if while we're welding this here, it kind of puckers and distorts the shape of the tube a little bit on the inside there, that's actually not gonna create an interference with this bearing uh, because it's in the middle of the tube. So I had a lot of fun iterating on that design, running some on the lathe, then testing them, seeing what the issue was, then doing another one. It's just a lot of fun to develop that. And uh, I feel like if I needed to make a CNC machine bicycle head tube, I've like learned a little bit about that sort of process. Uh, it was totally fun. Then, if we look at this assembly here, we have a sleeve bearing on this end and we have a flange bearing on this end. And so a flange bearing has the flange. Also, this is 20 millimeters across and this one is 30. That's just the specification that I could get off the shelf, so I'm just using those. Although this is more than I would need for the, for the thickness or the depth or however you wanna think of that. But the reason that I want a flange here is because on this end, we have the bare steel of this tube up against this stainless washer. But on this end, we have an aluminum cap against this Delrin plastic. This is a nice sliding surface. You're not gonna wear out the aluminum or the, <clears throat> or the plastic this way. They're gonna slide nicely and smoothly. So I didn't wanna have the um, sleeve bearing on this end because it would have been aluminum on steel. Uh, th that would chew this up over time. On this end, I didn't want the, the flange because if it was steel against the, the uh, plastic against aluminum, none of that really bites or grips that well. And so it's important that when you do lock it, it, it locks up pretty well and you get better friction between the steel and the stainless uh, than you would between that and the plastic. And so I do a sleeve bearing on this end and a flange bearing on this end. And then if you look here, uh, you know, like in assembly, these pieces slide together, right? And you have, uh, the aluminum doesn't touch the steel, which is, you know, part of the idea with this design. Uh, aluminum is just a cheaper and easier material to fabricate with, and it's plenty strong. I just don't want it rubbing directly on the steel, so I use the, the bearings here. But on the end here, you see that this cap has a key, and it keys against this shaft here uh, with very little play. And so the idea here is that in the assembly, I'll show you on the fixture actually, <clears throat> because these are keyed together, 
When I spin the fixture around, let's move to a realistic, like this is lightly clamped. It's just enough to hold it in position. Notice the handle spins with the rest of the assembly. This is very important. So if I didn't have a keyed washer, what would happen is there would be more friction on the washer to the, uh, the Delrin flange bearing than there would be between this stainless steel washer and the aluminum cap. And what would happen is that the, uh, this washer would actually stay stationary with the whole tube assembly and it would have an influence on your preload of your handle. And so when you spun the fixture in this orientation, you would loosen your preload. And then when you spun it in this orientation, it would have the tendency to tighten the preload on this. But when you're using the fixture, you're up here in front, you want to spin things around, you don't want to change that preload on this. You want to have an adjustment for a certain amount of stiction or a certain amount of friction so that basically when you make an adjustment, it just stays there. And when you lock it, it stays there. And when you loosen it, it stays there. You don't want this adjusting on its own and walking around. And so anyway, by keying that, I was able to make this spin together. This handle moves with this, not with this. And so that's, it's a small detail that I think is pretty important. Now, if I didn't have to do that, I could have manufactured that part completely on my lathe, would have been easier and cheaper, but uh, I developed a process to make that on my mill that's actually still very efficient. So in the end, like it really doesn't cost us that much more, and I think it's totally worth doing because when you adjust this, you don't want to be thinking about this, you want to be thinking about that. There's another thing that I wanted to point out. I do this in a lot of my tooling. I've done it a couple places on the frame fixture. So you'll see that we have an adjustable handle at the end. And these are cool. They have, they have splines and a spring. And I, like I said, I like the Kip brand a lot better than these ones, but this is what you can get from McMaster car. So yeah, for prototyping, I'll buy this. And then for production, I buy the Kip ones. Uh, you can push this down and you can spin it and it free wheels and then it locks up, right? Well, this is a female handle, they call it, because the threads are internal. And then I use one of these. This is a set screw. These are like 50 cents or something. They don't cost that much money. This is alloy steel. The threads on this are good and strong. They will last a long time. And then this is aluminum. And so I want to connect the three of these, right? So we have steel threads, steel threads, and we have aluminum threads. Now you could buy what they call the male version of this that has external threads on a, sh on a shaft, but instead I do it this way. I'll take this screw, I'll, I'll, I'll make the threads of very specific depth here, I'll put Loctite on this, and then I'll bottom it out hard into this, and now this steel thread becomes an extension of this part, and when you spin this, you're turning these steel threads against these steel threads, right? And basically, the steel on the steel is going to last a very, very long time. And if you ever were to chew up or wear out the threads, this is replaceable and this is replaceable. This is the harder part to replace uh, if you're not in my machine shop or even if you are. You don't want to have to like, what you would hate is if you chewed up these aluminum threads, which are relatively softer, and then you'd have to like drill it out bigger and install a helicoil and it's a whole bunch of nonsense. And uh, basically there's a design solution, which is just to, to plan on doing it this way for, I don't know if it even costs any more money at all. It'd be probably less than a dollar extra, if anything. You just bottom this out into here and then this spins on that. And uh, now you have a much more robust thread system. I do that in a lot of places on my tools. I don't know where I saw that first or if I came up with that, but it, it works really good. I would recommend doing that whenever you can when you're dealing with aluminum and threads that carry a load. So this is just the stand of the whole fixture. Uh, hopefully this illustrates the thoughtfulness that goes into every little detail. There's other videos that I made about this fixture and its benefits and its application. And uh, I have all sorts of information on my website. I'd love to talk to you if you're interested in a frame fixture. I'm just a nerd about this stuff. I'd love to help you figure out if this one is right for you or not. It's all good. Thanks for watching.